Hey guys, so it actually happened. Jeremy had BanCon. BanCon was his own convention during the same place and location as GP Indy. I believe Tularian Community College is at GP Indy. And I also believe he's being paid to be there or he's getting hotel and plane ticket. So Jeremy spent his own money to have BanCon which is a tournament for his supporters and his fans and anyone who, and the turnout looks pretty good. But in the main GP in Indy, Channel Fireball, somehow, I mean, somehow they got enough money to hire off-duty cops to look out for Jeremy. This kind of slightly changes what, I mean, I still want to go with the Jeremy cosplay, my video today, my other video today will probably explain why my store is so behind. Uh, to summarize, we had an employee, the employee is no longer with us and we are behind because that employee or worker was supposed to eventually learn how to do the website, learn how to do inventory, make videos, so I wouldn't have to, so I could spend more time on other stuff like the business end, but whatever, it didn't work out. Interestingly enough, I mean, this is such a dichotomy, right? You have Jeremy who's banned, who Channel Fireball is hiring police, off-duty cops to vet, prevent him from attending a GP. And then you have Tolarian Community College who is being promoted very heavily in the banners. He's actually the main attraction, I feel for GP Indy by the same company. Oh, here's a picture of one of the cops in the Channel Fireball t-shirt. It sure looks like they can afford it. And as well as, surprisingly, no background checks until it was recently mentioned, but they couldn't afford cops to keep out Jeremy from it. I mean, yeah, this is happening and this is real. This happened at GP Indy just uh, right now, actually. It kind of shows you where everyone's head is in. Is Jeremy the best Magic player ever? Is he like the most uh, attractive in terms of marketing? Probably not. But do you really need to hire police to keep him out? Ugh. Might, it might be their new policy, which would make going to GP Houston a tiny bit harder to do especially since I'm sure that they've been briefed that anyone who, they probably have a picture of Jeremy like on a wanted list so they can compare every magic player with Jeremy. I would love, it would be really funny and I would love to record it if the cosplayer, the Jeremy cosplayer got, I mean, I'm not saying that he should get arrested or anything, but if he got detained momentarily because they had, and they were comparing pictures, right? The police off duty cop was like, hmm, this kind of looks like him. All right, let's, Let's grab them. Don't let them in. I find it just so astounding that even uh, today in 2018, we have such a difference in how people are treated, even though they're both YouTubers. One YouTuber is lauded and everything he does is turns into gold for Channel Fireball at least. And the other YouTuber is banned for life for some Pepe memes. And literally there are police looking for him are there are police that do not want him in channel fireball has openly stated they don't allow they're not going to allow jeremy in because he's been banned for life but the question is do they allow someone like alex Bercini in when he was banned and the answer is yes i know they allowed alex in this is fact so the cops outside the gp entrance is uh I mean, I wish they would do background checks, right? Like, I feel like the cops have their own background checks and the judges don't. Now, the policy has changed recently, but they have hid, they've hid some information, which you can go to the Wayback Machine and see that they have changed some things and in, including their policy on background checks. It's astounding, right? There's two types of people who play Magic the Gathering. Uh, there's a type who will 
go to GP Indy, pay for his own ticket, pay for his own hotel, set up shop at like a restaurant and meet his fans. And then there's another one who a free plane ticket, a free hotel is not even enough. He wants a stipend. And he has openly admitted this on Reddit. And Reddit said, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. You're amazing. It's so strange, right? It's so strange to think that these people started off at the same time and both of them had sponsors, both of them had cards to spoil, and Jeremy went down this way and Tolarian went the other way. And China Fireball is okay. They they will spend money to act, actively prevent Jeremy from entering the convention, and they will spend money to actively try to get Tolarian Community College to do popper. Why is he doing popper? I'm small side. I am going to whine a tiny bit, so please bear with me. Popper is to sell popper cards. Why did they promote Frontier? It's to sell Frontier cards. It didn't work. Those cards are crap, and now they're worthless. But during a small uptick, they were able to sell more cards. So when when you see Tolarian Community College at an event, and maybe you don't have a popper deck, maybe you've never had it, guess who you can buy cards from? Vendors. Now, you don't have to buy from Channel Fiable directly, but all the vendors, the vendors pay Channel Fiable for a vendor spot. Therefore, it makes sense for them to make money. The more money they make, the more happy they're going to be, and the more likely they're going to go for the next GP or be able to pay a higher price soon. That's how monopolies work. When you have a monopoly, you can charge whatever the blank you want. So now we have a new format, right? It's not modern. People have their modern decks. It's not standard. Standard's kind of bad. It is popper. And now you might be saying, oh, okay, that's that's fine. He's just asking people to buy $20 popper decks, which his videos, YouTube videos have been about. Those $20 popper decks, check the price today. What's going to be really interesting from an MTG Finance perspective is my video series where I take a look at his popper deck, which he says is $20 under, and then I wait. I wait about mm, a week, and then I re tell you how much the popper deck is. I guarantee you it's not $20 anymore. And that's his effect. So he can make a video about a deck that's $20 today or when the video was produced is $20 then sell a ton of cards and that's kind of why I'm a little interested because his videos have cardkingdom.com as the link but he's also sponsored by channel fireball so I don't know how that would work that's, it seems like it would be competing interests right anyway that is neither here or there I just wanted to show you how unfair Magic the Gathering is where you have such a difference in treatment from Channel Fireball, from Riz Wizards of the Coast. Had Tolarian made the argument that we should all get background checks or that judges should get background checks, no one would have fought him. They would have said, hurrah, yeah, great job, this makes a lot of sense. And the Wizards of the Coast would have changed their policy without all of this negativity and negative press. You might be like, oh, well, he does a product review. How is he going to product review background checks? I don't know. At the end of the day, Magic is not doing very well. I saw a Rudy video about it, and I don't know. I don't think the Rivals of Ixalan has any value long term. I think it has none. I'll be very honest with you. Those cards after rotation are totally trash. Maybe there's one or two of them that are going to stand the test of time. But even then, it's just, it's reprinted too much. Any product in Walmart or Target and Barnes & Noble, if you see that, that product, stay away from it because it's just mass distributed. So those Walmarts and MJ Holdings are like, you know, I, let me play this way. Sometimes when I go to Walmart, I see Innistrad packs and I buy them. How the blank do they still have Innistrad packs? It's because, and they have this giant warehouse, right? And they just have stuff and no one knows what the stuff is. 
and they just put in in these repackages or the, these special limited edition mystery boxes which are promoted by Wizards of the Coast. I don't like these mystery boxes because they're not good value, but I know that they sell way more mystery boxes at Walmart than they sell anything at a local game store. Just from the sheer amount of Walmarts and sheer amount of casual players who are like, all right, I'll pick up a mystery box. So it's pretty bad. I am not going to go ahead and make up this information to sell you cards because I have no interest in selling magic cards or boxes. The things are... the I can answer... I can give you proof that Kaladas was not a great set, that A for Revolt, in terms of value. I'm talking about expected value. Hour of Devastation, Amaket, I saw they were the two weakest sets I've ever seen. They've been pretty weak sets. RTR was the last strong set, in my opinion, that wasn't a Modern Masters reprint in terms of the quality of new cards as well as just, I mean, it has five shock lands, right? Concert Tarkir, you can argue that the fetch lands are there and that's great, but the new cards weren't that valuable. They didn't design any strong cards in Concert Tarkir. There's the five fetch lands and that's pretty much it. Uh, you could also make the argument that like mm, casual players and dinosaurs and pirates and they're going to drive up the market. Not with the supp the supply is too high. That's the problem. The supply is too high. Rivals of Ixlon, supposedly the supply is lower because it is a second set. But you look at Eldritch Moon. I, I look at these second sets. They have historically should be very good because it's less open, less drafted, less... Just less open. But they're not going to stand the test of time. I am certain of this. And I'm certain that you, with two years from now, four years from now, and you look at a box of it, it won't be $100. You won't make any margin. If you buy the box at 78 which is the distributor price of Rivals of Ixlon, for, it to, for you to make any money on this, and this is assuming that your cost of opportunity is zero, that you have no other way to reuse your money, is uh, very bad. I went on a tangent, but anyway, they were police. Hi, <laughs> guys.